Hi, this is Aaron Reed with Verge.io, um, Verge.io Hyperconverged Infrastructure. And today we're going to be covering how we do a VMware backup and import into Verge.io. Now, the first thing I want to go over is some of the, the base requirements we have for the import process into Verge.io from VMware. First, you need admin access into the vCenter that is managing the source VMs. Second, you need a vCenter DNS host name or IP address to get access to that vCenter. Third, you need the vCenter version to be 6.0 6 or higher with the VM change block tracking enabled and supported. And lastly, you need the following ports open end to end between your vCenter and your Verge IO. These are all open by default, but sometimes these can be locked down in more secure environments. Port 80, port 443, and port 902. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started with the process. So the first thing I'll do is I'll log into my Verge IO cloud environment. Once I log into my environment, that brings me to my primary dashboard where I can look at different sub environments by clicking on these management tiles and or going in through my left navigation bar. The first thing I wanna show you guys is my virtual machine. So I'll click on my virtual machines dashboard tile. I'll come in here and I'll drill down one deeper where I can show you a list of my virtual machines. Right now I have eight different virtual machines. I have a couple of Windows VMs that are turned on. I have a couple that are turned off. I also have our local NAS services that are turned on, and then I have a few Linux VMs that are turned off. So you can see we have eight VMs there. Now, if I go back into my Verge cl Cloud um, dashboard, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to my backups in DR, and that's where we import from VMware into Verge IO. So I'll click on my backup in DR, and here you can see I have a VMware environment. I also have a VMware backup job here, so I'll click on that. This one's called my vCenter backups because we actually use vCenter to do the backups from and importing. So I'll double click on that vCenter backup. Once I click on that, you can see I do have some more additional services or configuration settings that I can do on the left-hand navigation bar, but we'll just click right into there. Once I'm in, I can see I have a tile of six virtual machines. That means I'm backing up six virtual machines. And if I look down further in this um, tile down here, I can see the status of those six virtual machines. I have four of those VMs that when we do the backups, they show as four of those show as running in vCenter and two of them show as stopped. Today, we're gonna go ahead and restore this Windows 2019-01 VM. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that VM. Once I double click on that VM, I can see a list of the different backup jobs that are running for it. I'll do the, the most recent backup job, which is this hourly that just kicked off a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that backup job. And once I click on that, I have a couple options on my left-hand navigation bar. I can import the VM, which we're going to do today. But if I want to restore it from a backup, from that specific backup, I could restore it into vCenter from here. So let's go ahead and click Import. Now, when I go to Import it, it basically gives me a new name so that I'm not um, importing it over a current VM. So we'll call this uh, VMW Import. And you can also preserve the MAC address, but I'm not going to preserve the MAC address because I'm running on a DHCP network, and this network is actually the same network as on my vCenter, so I don't want to have any conflicts with my MAC address or my IP addresses. And I'll go ahead and click Submit. Once it's submitted, it completes automatically. The reason it completes automatically is we're basically taking that um, VM backup that we've already ran in our environment and that's stored in the Verge IO cloud, and we're turning on as an import in our environment. And then now that I have it imported, I can go back into my cloud dashboard. I can go into my virtual machines. I should see it right here. You can see our VMW import. I'm going to go ahead and power that guy on. Yes, I'm going to power it on. Now that it's getting powered on, I'm going to double click on that VM. And when I double click on that VM, the one thing I want to show you is my NICs here. It automatically picks up the Intel E1000 NIC, so it's pretty much compatible with our Verge IO cloud environment. Um, and that changed it over from a, a vNIC one, one the, the uh, default VMware settings for their NIC. And then it's also going to that VM network, so it'll pick up an IP address automatically. So I shouldn't have any disconnects. I'll go ahead and go into the console up here. I'll do a control alt delete. Yes, I have a nice little warning there. We'll go ahead and log in. I'm going to close my console buttons up here with our console buttons. We also have a power reset. We have a little chat board for um, if you want to chat um, support for your end users. And then we also have clipboard copy where you can copy text in if you're doing things like running scripts and or entering URLs, that sort of stuff. Close out some of these default windows. It says this device is ready. Thank you. That means my KeyMU agent is up and running. You can see here my network is internet access ready. I'll go ahead and click on my Google Chrome to show you that we do actually have internet access. 
brings us right to our Virgil.io website. And if I go into here to show you that we're not just bluffing, you can see the different content that we have in here. And that's it for today. That's how, how easy it is to import a VM into the Virgil.io cloud from VMware. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Thanks, Aaron Reed, signing off.